Hello students, welcome to Lab 13. We're going to be talking about meiosis. Um, basically, we'll be going through the slides and talking about how crossing over takes place. Um, we've already talked about meiosis before, but you know, this is the lab portion. Okay. So, in meiosis, this is the production of gametes, uh, eggs, and sperm. So gametes are cells that pass genetic information on to the next uh, generation, the offspring. Um, it produces half the number of chromosomes. So if you have a diploid parent, you're going to produce haploid, um, haploid gametes, right? So our cells contain 23 chromosomes. So in, I'm sorry, our cells contain 46 chromosomes in the sperm cells and the egg cells, it's gonna contain 23 chromosomes. So when they come together in fertilization, when an egg cell and sperm cell fuse in fertilization, it's producing an, a zygote. Right? So, a normal body cell is called a somatic cell. And then a meiotic cell is called a sex cell. Right? Whenever it's haploid, it's called a sex cell. Okay. We have homologous chromosomes. Um, homo means same in, in uh, Latin, so, or I'm sorry, in Greek. So you have homologous, so they're both the same type of chromosome. They contain the same genes. Um, keep in mind that they don't contain the same type of genes if you have. Um, heterozygous genes, so you have different types of alleles in those genes. Homologous chromosomes contain the same genes. They're the same size. Centromere is the same place on the chromosome. The same type of genes are located in the same place within the DNA. If you have sex uh, chromosomes, then if you have an XX chromosome, right, those are homologous chromosomes, but if you have an XY chromosomes, those are heterogenetic chromosomes, right? Right, and that makes male in our species. In meiosis, once the cell is completed interphase, it enters prophase one of meiosis. During this phase, um, it undergoes the process of synapsis. Synapsis is the process of forming a tetrad. So forming that tetrad means that you have two different homologous chromosomes, right? So it'll form up those homologous chromosomes and those two homologous chromosomes will start crossing over, right? They'll become so close together that they'll start crossing over and those alleles will start binding and switching between those homologous chromosomes. Crossing over produces genetic diversity. We know the different rounds of division we have prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, and then telophase one, right? Produces two daughter cells, and then prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and then telophase two produces four daughter cells. And by the end, we have differing identical, or differing non-identical um, DNA of haploid 
gametes. We can compare mitosis to meiosis. So mitosis has somatic cells. One round of division goes from 2N uh, diploid to diploid, produces two daughter cells that are genetically identical, that will divide again and again and again. Meiosis produces gametes, or sex cells, production, production of eggs and sperm, goes through two rounds of division, goes from two, uh, diploid to haploid, produces four daughter cells that are genetically non-identical, daughter cells will not divide uh, again from there. Then the role in the body, mitosis is for growth and repair, meiosis is reproduction. Both of them undergo DNA replication. Different types of somatic cells, you have skin cells, nerve cells, heart cells, nose cells, I mean, anything except the eggs and the sperm. Just to say, you can probably do this at home if you want to. Um, four daughter cells and crossing over has occurred in telophase two. Uh, crossing over has taken place, therefore this is meiosis. Two cells present there. If the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. That's metaphase two of meiosis. If you see two different cells and they're lined up in the center, that's metaphase two. However, if there's only one cell present and it's lined up in the center, it's only metaphase one. No evidence of crossing over has taken place. Therefore, it's mitosis. And you can see it's only anaphase. But if you can see there has been evidence of crossing over, it's anaphase one of meiosis. And it's only one cell. Okay, you can go through these if you want to. Spermatogenesis, sperm production occurs in the testes, sperm formation takes place in the seminiferous tubules. So beginning near the inner tubule wall, these are slides that you could have seen in lab. Um, so you can see the meiosis taking place in slides. So cells undergoing meiosis, you can see them developing sperm within those seminiferous tubules. You can also see meiosis taking place in the root of um, onion tips. Okay, uh, spermatogenesis. So this is the um, whole sperm. You can see the head, the neck, the body, and the tail. The sperm in the nucleus which contains DNA. The nucleus is haploid. And the tail is a flagellum, so it'll spin and then swim over to the egg, which will then get fertilized. Okay, oogenesis is the creation of the eggs. The oocyte is haploid. Oocyte, um, OO means egg, and site means cell, so the egg cell. 
again, um, this is another slide that is in lab. Graphene follicles contain fluid-filled vesicles that enlarge to take up most of the follicle. And you can see the oocyte right there in the picture. It can be found on one edge of the large uh, pronounced vacuole. Eventually, the follicle will fuse to the edge of the ovary and eject the oocyte from the ovary into the fallopian tube. Once again, um, the lab practical is on Wednesday. Okay. We will be going over some questions uh, today just to kind of go over some of these just so you can kind of get where we need to go with this, okay? So let's kind of go through that. Movement of molecules. So diffusion, is it passive or active? Should be passive, right? Because diffusion through a membrane doesn't require ATP for it to go through. For red blood cells, which solution is hypotonic? Hypotonic is distilled water. Isotonic is 0.9% sodium chloride. Hypertonic is 10% sodium chloride. Okay. Keep that in mind. Hypertonic means that it's shriveling. Okay, it starts to, starting to shrivel. That means the outside solution has to have more salt in it. All right. That means that the water is coming out. Okay. Hypotonic means that the outside solution has to have more water in it. Right. That means that the water is coming in. Right. Hypotonic means the water is coming in. All right. When plant cells are turgid, will the plant be standing upright or wilted? If it's turgid, it means is it's upright. Right? It's turgid. It's standing upright. Okay. That also means that it's hypertonic. It's upright, it's turgid. If you're slicing, slicing potatoes that you'll fly right later, you want them to be moist on the inside. Should you soak them in salt water or unsalted water? Well, if you want them to be moist later, you want them to be inundated with water, right? So you want them to be in unsalted water, right? You want them to be in distilled water or something like that so that the water can come in. Okay. Let's go on to chapter nine, enzymes. Where does an enzyme affect, how does an enzyme affect a chemical reaction? It'll increase the chemical reaction, right? It'll start breaking apart the chemical reaction. It'll, it'll increase the chemical reaction somewhat. It'll heat up the chemical reaction, something along those lines, okay? 
Are enzymes reusable? Yes. Enzymes are reusable because they don't break apart whenever they do what they need to do, right? What conditions can denature an enzyme? Anything from acid to heat to other chemicals, okay? Anything along those conditions. What is the name of any enzyme that you used in this lab? So you can say catalase. Um, that's an enzyme that we used in this lab. Okay. What were two tissues that were used as a source of this enzyme? Well, one tissue in specific was the, uh, was the potato. Specifically a um, potato pith, P-I-T-H. But you can say potato, potato stem. Another one is a liver. Liver is an organ, but it's a liver tissue. You didn't specifically use a liver, but it is in the lab. How would you know if a reaction has taken place in the test tube? Well, how did you know if the reaction has taken place? Bubbles appeared, right? Oxygen has been released. What substrate did the catalase enzyme bind to? Peroxide, right? It bound to the peroxide and released oxygen and water. Okay. Let's move on to chapter 10. Photosynthesis. What are the products of photosynthesis? Well, we have sugar, specifically triose or glucose, and then ATP, right? What else? Oxygen. Okay. What organelle does it take place in? Chloroplasts. Where does Calvin cycle occur? Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma. Okay. Where do the light reactions occur? In the thylakoid membrane. What gas is necessary for photosynthesis to occur? CO2, right? In the experiment that separated the pigment molecules, what pigment was the most polar? So we talk about the most polar. So it doesn't pull up polar pigments. Keep that in mind. So in this experiment, which was the most non-polar? The carotenoids. Or carotene.
In the spinach leaf experiment, what did the sodium bicarbonate provide for photosynthesis to occur? CO2, right? So in the presence of light, what process was occurring? In the presence of light, the light reactions were occurring. In the absence of light, what process was occurring? That'd be the Calvin cycle and or the um, uh, cellular respiration. So what organelle is involved in cellular respiration? Mitochondria. Okay. Let's go through 11. Fermentation. Not much with this one, but we had to go through it. What organism was used in the fermentation experiment? We had yeast. Saccharomyces uh, cerevisiae. Which of the tubes was the control? Uh, distilled water, right? We usually have distilled water as a control. Why would a cell use fermentation instead of cellular respiration? Because cellular respiration just has a lot more ATP, right? But you can't use cellular respiration without oxygen. So if there's no oxygen, it will undergo fermentation instead. Why were the tubes placed in a warm water bath? Why do you think it would be, need to be warm? So it could under do it faster. If it was cold, it would probably do it a lot slower. Why didn't the gas bubble in the water tube increase in size? Because it's, it's water. It, it's not going to do anything. It's a negative control. When, ye when making yeast bread, what causes, what gas causes bread to rise? CO2, right? Because whenever it's undergoing fermentation, CO2 is being released. Okay. Going to lab 12, mitosis. Which phase of cell division does DNA replication occur? S phase of interphase. How many pairs of chromosomes would a human daughter cell have at the end of mitosis? The same at the, as the beginning of mitosis. So if it's diploid, it would be diploid. What is the process where cytoplasm divide called? That is cytokinesis or yeah, cytokinesis. 
In what stage of the cell cycle does the cell have daughter chromosomes? It's probably anaphase. Because the sister chromatids have split, it's no longer sister chromatids, it's daughter chromosomes. In plant cells, what structure forms as a result of cytokinesis? This is called a cell plate. In mitosis, what are the daughter cells? Are the daughter cells genetically identical or diverse? In mitosis, they're identical. Okay. Then we can go to 13. What is a somatic cell? Somatic cell is anything but the sex cells. So anything but a sperm or an egg cell. So hair cells, nose cells, stomach cells, heart cells, yeah. Are gametes haploid or diploid? For us, they are haploid. In which stage of meiosis does synapsis occur? That is prophase one. What gamete is produced in the seminiferous tubules? Seminiferous, seminiferous, those are sperm cells. Are daughter cells identical in meiosis? No, they're not, because of crossing over, right? Does crossing over occur between sister or non-sister chromatids? So, do they occur between non-sister chromatids or sister chromatids? They occur between non-sister chromatids. See that? Okay. If you have any more questions over the review or anything else for the lab practical, please let me know. Other than that, uh, good luck on the lab practical, um, and we'll go over the lecture exam two review on Wednesday, or I'm sorry, lecture exam three review on Wednesday. Um, I will see you then.